and that, see. You take anybody and get out and make two or three hundred dollars a week. I wasn't making, I was making about two hundred dollars a week when I had to retire. And I was over two departments, in charge of two departments, three shifts, seven days a week. Kids now go down and make more money than I was making there. Now, I understand that they weren't that the management wasn't happy with the NIRA and uh, Section Seven A. Were you aware of how the management, you know, tried to 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 deal with that? No, I tell you the truth. See, I was a young buck. I wasn't thinking too much, and somehow I don't know. I imagine it's uh, after I got into management, especially I could understand the front office, how they could feel, because I had to deal with the front office a lot. And uh, I don't think they could be happy with it. Some of them, after they got to making money, Later years after they saw what he had laid out there and it started paying off, they might have might have fell in line with it. Did you, but to start with, they thought it was all going broke. Did you hear about the union discrimination that was going on in the, in Georgia? Oh yeah, yeah. That was in '34. Yeah. You heard about it? Yeah, that's when my goons come down here. They'd get them from anywhere, the goods, see. And it it taken them quite a while before the conciliation service got set up to handle the problems of organized labor, but the 1934 strike had busted, see. And the people was afraid, but now, you take in 41, after we organized then, we could get conciliation service to come in and handle a lot of our problems, see, under that section. No, a lot of people. I remember a lot of people filed grievances after the thirty-four strike to try to get their jobs back. Yeah. Now, did Mary Layla? Did everyone get hired back here? I don't know. Like I say, I, I actually can't remember that thing. Okay. Well, it says here, strike closes mill at Union Point in Greensboro. No disorders. Around 300 employees joined the big strike at the Mary Layla Cotton Mills. The mill employees joined the big strike at the Mary Layla Cotton Mills. The mill is picketed by the union members against sabotage. Everything is quiet. The utmost good humor prevails on both sides. Superintendent G.R. Brook of the mill says he does not expect any trouble. Union manufacturing company is closed. The same condition prevails at Union Point. Around 350 employees are out and the hosiery mill is closed. No trouble is expected. It is sincerely hoped the strike will be settled at an early date. It don't say nothing about who was president of that local though, no. does it? I know I know him. Was he a local man? Um, oh yeah, if he was president of a local, we elected him, see? That's what I can't, I, I can't, that's why that's why I went to ask that lady. I thought maybe she could uh, remember because uh, all she could remember was that barbecue that made everybody sick. My wife was pregnant and it, oh, she was terribly sick from that thing. But it didn't make, if some of us, it didn't make sick. But it. Um, did I? I wish I could think. I, I shouldn't ask the woman how old they are, but... You could ask me how old I am. You hadn't been... You, you had, I doubt if your dad, mother and daddy had been born back then. No, they were born. I'm 30 years old. 30. That's the age of my grandson. He was 30 this year. Now... I'm going to show you that letter from those black workers again, and maybe you could help me figure out what they were talking about, okay? 
Now, do you, before I do that, do you remember, um, did they have, like, a, any big meetings where they brought other local unions to come and meet with you in Greensboro, or you met with other people in Monroe, or Madison, or Noonan, or Macon. Macon had a big union. The guy there, there's an organizer there named Ralph Gay in Macon. I know Ralph Gay. He was, he was with the TWA in 41. And he was with the UTWA in 34. In 34, yeah. I know him. Knew him well. Good friend of mine. Really? Yeah. Ralph got sick while he was here in 30, in 41. And uh, I went by to see Ralph Lutz when he, he was, had a room up here in, in town, and I went by to see him a lot, see if he needed anything. Ralph Gay. Do you know where he was, his home was in Augusta? And some of his folks got to be sheriff down there, and Ralph got to be a deputy sheriff down there before he died. He, that's what he had quit the organizing and gone to. Ralph had a bad heart. Was he a real strong union man? Oh yeah, yeah, real strong, and a good fellow. He's a good fellow. Him and Horace White coming in organized this film forty-one. Did you know Homer Welsh? Homer Welch. From uh, Hogansville. Huh? From Hogansville. No. I, I, I don't. No, I don't. Did you know a lawyer named uh, Joe Jacobs? No. I knew Kellen Weeks. They were Brooks lawyers. And then a fella by the name of, uh, what is that fella name that day? I can't think of his name. After they got rid of Kenlon Weeks, they got him after Brooks left. See, Brooks left after the 45 strike. Now, you don't remember when um, Ralph Gay was organizing in Macon, do you? Do you remember anything about no, that? No, I, I don't. I knew Gay. I, I I didn't know Gay until forty one. He come in here. What did he think about the thirty four strike? Did you ever talk about it? No. I tell you the truth. It looked like that thing just slid by me somehow. I can't remember nothing about it. Now, this is what these fellers wrote. Should I read it to you? Honorable Hugh Johnson, Who? Hugh Johnson, he was the head of the NRA. Oh, yeah. Hugh Johnson. And it says, January 5th, 1934, Honorable Hugh Johnson, U.S. Capitol, Washington, D.C. Dear Sir, on Tuesday, January 2nd, Seven men were fired from the Mary Layla Cotton Mill of this city on Friday morning, January 5th. Oh, on Friday morning. On January 5th, no, sorry, on Tuesday, January 2nd, seven men were fired from the Mary Layla Cotton Mill of this city. On Friday morning, January 5th, seven more were fired, making a total of 14. These men have been working at the factory from 2 to 14 years and were fired without any reason. The factory recently put in new machinery, which of course reduced the number of men. For this number, 14 colored were working inside, 12 operated machines, and 2 cleaners. We feel that this was unfair as whites were taken from their jobs to be put on color jobs. We will appreciate it if you will send NRA authorities to investigate. Respe respectively, 14 colored men. No, that was, like I said, that was when, evidently, that's when they cut out that operation and but now I think they went by seniority on that. The elder, the people that had been there longest, rolled them for the job like you do under a contract. 
seniority rule, but, which I believe in that. Now this was happening during, this happened, I guess, soon after the NRA was put in place and they were paying people the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And I guess they would have had to be paying the black workers minimum wage if they were working inside because the people on the yard didn't get minimum wage. Remember that? Yeah, they did here. Yeah. They did? Yeah. Even in 34? Yeah. They, they they all went up to 30, 30 cents an hour. Okay. Well, what do you think? Now, if, we, if, if a company was working under so many hands, they didn't have to pay it. But now, see, we was working. They was on the payroll, and they all was in uh, in Bob, the yard hands and all. You take Ed Merritt was yard woman when he retired down there. And do you, what do you think? Of, I mean, they wrote the letter, so they definitely... I don't know what they... Unless it was in 34... It was. We, we cut out an operation of speeders. We had speeders. We run out of drawing through slubbing operations, slubbers, intermediates, and speeders. Well, we decided they was going on, they decided it was going to cut out the speeder operation and run it direct from the intermediates to the spinning. So that cut out several hands, I think. Now, but those wouldn't have been black jobs, right? No, that, but the blacks, you see, in that department there was some blacks working. And I think them fellas went down and rolled them. Offer these jobs, see, offer these jobs. Because they was that job was done away with. And I believe that's just the th that's the situation they're talking about. But now uh, some of them fellas wasn't in the card room. That you got the names there. Well, you see, I don't know the names. All I did mm -hmm. was go to talk to some of the black now, people, I don't know. and they told me who was working there. I don't know. A bit holder was one of them. Okay, I got some new names today. Let me read this to you, okay? I don't know them. Uh, I know some of them. I, I remember some of them. But, uh, okay, I spoke today with Edward Barnhart, and he said that there was Tom Brown. Remember him? No. Willie Criddle. I remember Willie, yeah. Bit, hold, bit holder. Bit holder, yeah. Benny Ash. Who? Benny Ash. I don't remember. He must have been on another ship. Okay. See. George Merritt. I don't remember him. Yeah. Graham Jackson. Mm -mm. Ed, Edward Barnhart. He was a cleaner. He would come in on part time and do the walls when people yeah. spit uh -huh. on them. I know Barnhart. Yeah, I knew all the Barnhart's up on the hill here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Used to be a bunch of them up there. Jim Copeland? No, I don't remember. Fan Biggis? Tam Biggis? Mm -mm. Charlie Young? No. Lauren Horton? Lauren Horton, I know him, yeah. Yeah. Lon was a good, he was a good colored fellow. I knew him and his wife both well. Did he work, uh, he worked there in the car, in the, in that room too? I believe he was a card stripper. I believe he was a card stripper. Down on, on the cards. But now that's what I say, that's where, that's where lots of them fellas, but now some of them fellas had been running frames was, uh, according to, the payroll, they was older. They, there were okay. black men who were running frames? No, they was white. Okay. So this is just black men that they're yeah. talking about. That's right. But that's why they was, that's why they was, some of them was laid off, I imagine, and some went to the yard, uh, yard crew. And we used to have a carpenter crew before the mill sold the village. They had a crew of carpenters that, and painters that kept the village up, see. And there was some colored work out there. 
Do you, what do you think about the fact that they wrote this letter? I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know why it was. Was it during the time that we, they, that Union was here, June yeah. 34? Mm -hmm. Well, evidently the Union wrote it for them. You think so? Yeah. Why? Well, naturally they was uh, they was trying to help them probably, but they could, wasn't too much they could do about it if the seniority was. But do you think that it doesn't? I have a feeling that a black man wrote that. Just because they didn't sign their name, it wasn't on Union Stationery, there's nothing formal about it. Well, it, it. might be uh, if it wasn't on Union Stationery, but that's why I say the Union must have told them they couldn't do nothing to help them if it was seniority, if they had more seniority than they did. Well, in, at this point in 34, the Union had just been organizing for about four or five months. Because the Union started organizing in July of 33, and they wrote this letter in January of 34. So the Union was just around for a couple of months. Yeah. Do you remember people writing letters if they didn't like what was going on? No. I sure don't. Do you think that your local Union would have been open to talking with black people? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But they come to have a meeting. In thirty four? Not in thirty four. Ah, I don't okay. Okay. I don't remember. Right. Uh, I don't remember a meeting right. okay. in thirty four. Okay. In forty one they came to the meeting. Yeah. That's why I say I can't remember. Okay. What went on during that and I'm quite sure I was a member and I'm quite sure I was active. But as far as remembering anything about it, I can't. Okay. Um because I was active in them from then on until I moved into a supervisor position. Well, what happened after the 34 strike and things kind of busted up? Did, did, how did Mary Leela maintain their union ideas? Well, they, I, I say it was, uh, it hurt. It hurt as far as organizing the people. That strike did. And it taken a good while because when we when we organized in forty one it was uh well like I say, them dolphins went out there and asked for two or three cent raise, thirty five cents an hour I think it was. They might have been making uh, might have been making thirty two cents uh, just just off of the menu, but I believe they asked for thirty five cents an hour. And they said, No boys. Can't pay it, I have to shut it down. They said, Well shut her down. They struck and didn't have no union. We got Ralph Gay and Horace White in here after the struck after they stopped the mail. That's right. But now, from I, I know what happened after that, but I can't, I can't go back to that thirty-four deal. Okay. Well, I think that the Mary Layla just opened up and everybody came back to work. I have a feeling that's what happened. Yeah, that's what it did. I don't think it, it was did. bad like it was in other places. It did. It. Uh, it wasn't. There wasn't no trouble after the, after the strike, as I can remember. Now, now, Mr. Leland, did did they was that did they stretch out in the mill? I mean, as a result of having to pay people minimum wage and working eight hours, did they start doubling people up? Did that start to happen? No, we didn't. Not in thir in thirty four. No, we didn't. No, and uh, now what brought on another strike was they they did try to stretch out some. Brought on another strike but, in, but, in forty something. But not in thirty four. Not in thirty four, okay. no. But do you, it, it did happen though that there was one room where there was many black men working there, and you pulled away some machines, and they lost their jobs. Did that happen? That is that's the only thing I can understand. 
Yeah, I don't know whether it was 34 or not. But well, it must have been 34 because they wrote this letter. It was about that time. Okay. It must have been because we pulled out that operation and that laid, that left, let's see, that, that left, let's see, we had 19 speeders and people run from three, run four, 16, and one run three. That was four, eight, 12, 16, and three would have been 19. That was five speeder, that was five frame hands there, see. And we had about five dolphins dolphins them speeders. But what, the were the, but what were the black people? The black people, they say they were running machines. I figured they were working opening or picking machines. Opening, picking, and cards. We had them. They, they was running them. And they was cleaning on them. Okay. They was had to clean them. And when, when you close, when, you, when they say that they put in new machinery... The factory, the factory recently put in new machinery, which of course reduced the number of men. How would that new machinery affect their jobs? I don't think it was, I don't think that was what, I don't think to put in new machinery then. I think to cut out that operation. They cut out the black people's operation? Or they just put no, white they people cut out the, cut, it wasn't a black operation, but it, it was a black, it was a white people operation and by it being in 34 in the Union, yeah, I imagine seniority taking over, see, and laid them off. Laid off the black workers. If it was, I like, had more seniority, see, they got the job. Oh, you mean the white people got their jobs because yeah. the black people had been working there for a short period of time? The white time. people had more seniority than they did. They taking a job. You take people worked in that mill down there all their life. I did. But 44 years, then. And you know something? Back them days, we had no pension. Didn't have a pension. That's why you can understand the elderly people feel like we cheated back them days. When there's so much going on now, see? So much money out there. You take a kid, you get out here and make $500 a week. And we are making a dime an hour. Not fair. Not fair. Well, that's uh, naturally you can understand why some people feel like it was cheated. Who they feel cheated them? The companies paying a big dividend. Paying too much dividend and not enough la wages. You look around, you can see where the money was going from the families that owned the plants all over the country. It didn't go to labor, not till they had to. Now, I'll tell you one thing that organized labor did help. All of those textile workers, not organized. That threat is there. And they figure if they don't pay what going wages is, they're going to be organized, see? And we've got a plan out here. Al can, pays good wages. We've got one day at Union Point Universal Rumble, pays good wages. This mill down here pays good wages. That the Union Point pays good wages. But they're going to pay the going wage or they'll have a union. That's why organized labor helped. Although the industry, the textile industry is not organized. But they're reaping some of the benefits from the people that's organized. And what, what do you think the effect was on the South of all those people who got blackballed and had to leave back in 34? Well, they finally... You see, after the NRA taking effect and people got understood that that was against the law. You can't blackball a man there. Man got a right. Get out there and organize if you want to. 
Man, you got a right to protest if you want to. You can't blackball an employee. If you do, he can, well, uh, discrimination. Now, that's taking his rights. What about back then? Well, you didn't have that back then. You didn't have civil rights and equal rights and all them rights. You didn't, you didn't have, the law was, well, actually, the law was tough. You didn't have all this. The law, was, but now, I tell you the truth, they've handcuffed the law. The law can't. You take a policeman, can't run his job. They must have I felt, I mean, they wrote this to the government because President No, Roosevelt I don't said, think they did. They got somebody to write it. Some of the back them days, let's see. 34, they, they got some of these black school teachers or something to write that letter. Because I don't think either one of them men would have knew where to write it, to tell you the truth. In 1964, there wasn't as much schooling as there are now. 34, 34. I mean 34. Yeah. Now, the, I'll tell you something. The reason that the period of time that they wrote this, they were, um, that's when President Roosevelt and Hugh Johnson, they said, if your mill isn't complying with the NRA, let me know about it. So that's why I imagine they wrote this letter. But it was, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, so I just can't get it. But, so, but you don't, you do you you remember at one point a bunch of black men working and then they weren't working inside anymore? <clears throat> yeah, and some of them, some of them men went out on the yard, and I believe some of them went in other departments. Or Willie Criddle, now I, I remember old Willie, old Willie. He was a good, good colored. But I thought he went to work somewhere else. I don't remember. And uh, Eddie Lawrence. I don't know what become of him. But some of my knew and some of my I uh I didn't know, but I can't place. I can't place this way they went. But you think that this could have happened? I mean, that was the, the mill was having was bringing in new machinery. It it happened. Yeah, I know the lady. I, I know these white fellas taking over the jobs when they cut theirs out. But they'd probably been there twenty, twenty-five years, see. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, but the jobs that these black men were doing were in the opening room and the picking room? Yeah. And wasn't that something that white men didn't want to do? Well, back in them days, they, they probably didn't. Because it was a lots of... Lots of heavy work. You take handling truck and cotton, and uh, pickers, pulling pickle pins. Of course, I done it. I done it myself. And uh, toting laps, lap cards. Laps weighed about 40 something pounds a piece. You had to tote them out from the picker room out in the mill. To Hang them on a rack and lay them on your cards. See, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, it wasn't too bad. It was just that uh, it was easy to learn. Why? Why was it that the blacks could only do certain jobs? Well, they could. Well, them jobs was easy to learn. It didn't take much training. And. Uh, I tell you the truth, they, I, I never got paid to learn a job in my life. That's true. 
I had two brothers work down there in the card room. And after school, I'd go down there in the afternoons and help them. See, work was six o'clock. And one day, I just asked the boss, he come by there. I told him I'd love to have a job. He said, well, I've been noticing you. You can talk to these speeders. I said, yeah. He said, I'll talk to your daddy about it. And I, Papa told me when he come home, he said, boy, what are you talking about getting a job? I want you to go to school. But I just decided I want to go to work. A kid will, you know. Biggest mistake I ever made. I knew it in a week after I'd done it. See, I didn't have a chance. Kids got now. A kid can make a mistake and overcome it now, with all this money going around. See. Why couldn't you change it? Huh? How come you couldn't go back to school? Well, I ring his pride. I just do. Just say to say I was wrong. It's a hard lesson, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I paid through the nose for that. It is. And my family did too. See, I had to work hard after that to do the best I could. Wasn't for that little fella being bad shape. Hmm. My boyfriend has a nickname for that little fella. Huh? My boyfriend has a nickname for that little fella. What's that? He calls it a whiffer. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see now, what do they call it now? Puff, I believe. Yeah. A puff? That's what they call it in the hospital. Yeah. They'll ask me if you use your puff. Take two puffs. Take two puffs and call me in the morning, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he says his, 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 it's a lifesaver for him, too. Huh? It's a lifesaver for my boyfriend, also. Oh, yeah. Is he on a pull my aid machine? No, 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 no. He's only 34 years old, but sometimes he just can't breathe, and that just... Yeah. Because it's like, uh, now, do you think it was brave of these guys to write this letter to the government? Who? Do you think it was brave of these black men to write this letter to the government? Well, I, I don't blame them, no. I, it was, uh, I would have wanted to know something about it. Because back then they didn't understand what it's all about. Well, well, they didn't understand what seniority was and all that stuff. See. But was the NRA was that minimum wage supposed to cover the black workers too? Oh yeah, yeah, covered everybody. Yeah. Did it cover the outside help or just? It covered the outside help too. If you worked, if you worked over so many people, it covered them. Now, there were some sawmills, I think, didn't work enough people. They, 
They stayed on the 50 cents a day for a good many years after that, but he finally caught them too, see. Mm. Well, let me ask you one other question. Was there, a, was there a problem with like the buddy system and the way people were hired in the mills? Well, uh, I don't think so, because, see, like I said, back before then, we had children. The children had raised here on the village. But as uh, the NRA taking effect and got to making more money and got, then it went to 60 cents an hour and a dollar an hour, and then we started sending our kids to college. Was was. Was there a buddy system, though? You know, you're... Not far as high, no. See, we had a... The overseers done the high for a good many years, and then we had a personnel manager. But he never... I, I never... He, he never had help that I wanted. I wanted to talk to him myself. Help that I had because I wanted to understand them, let them understand me, see. What about, um, was there a problem, knowing that you have a wife there, I'm sure you were uh, concerned. I've, I've read some letters that women have written that um, sexual favors was a real problem. Well, like I said, I never did favor my wife because... No, 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 I don't mean like that. I mean like, before you were a boss, like earlier, before the NRA. Well, yeah, there was some of that going on. You could tell you. You know, uh, harassment, sexual. We called them bootlicks and stuff like that. Naturally, they'd play up to the boss to try to get a favor, see. But uh, I never did want nobody. I never did. It was, I tried to stay in the middle of the road. I never, and about half of, about half of the employees I had on my payroll was women. But it was, they were just like the men. See? And that's what I can't understand about all this. Discrimination these women's having problem with. They some nuts. They some goofy men around, tell you the truth. That's right. Some men think they so just There's lots of men that think women got to have them, see? And that's what causes all this and I don't I don't blame these women for giving them it. I would too. Any man that'll use his job, his authority, to try to take advantage of a person, you put a low down, must mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, um, do, do you think that, um, you know, I've been having such a, I've been able to talk to white mill workers easy. That's not, hasn't been my problem. A lot of the black mill workers, because we're just trying to tell an even story here, or just include everyone who worked in the mills. A lot of them have died, I guess, more so than the whites have. Oh, yeah. Most all the, uh, most all the folks that was in there in 34 have gone. There ain't too many of us left. No, not too many. Very few. Well, listen, I appreciate talking with you very much. Um, I'm going to leave you my card. If anything comes to your mind, I have a 1-800 number. You could call me free of charge, okay? Okay. Um, but I wish I could help you on that 34. But frankly, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in myself. But I understand my situation. I've been through the mill, see, I've been <laughs> since my wife died. And I've, uh, 
I've had it rough, and I, I understand that uh, my age and all, and but I just can't. And it was a year my son was born, and uh, but I can't. And I know about my wife getting sick with that barbecue. We had a barbecue, see, and she. It was advertised in the newspaper. It made 90% of the people sick. And my wife was pregnant, see. And Bobby was born in October, and maybe that, maybe I was worried to death about that. The reason I forgot all of it, I don't know. But I, I can't remember. You said that time. Say that again? Yeah, it was on the payroll I had in Greensboro at that time. Had a few little sawmills. Plenty mill, but they didn't pay fifty cents a day or so. And was the president of the mill also mayor of the town? At one time, at one time, Claude Robinson was mayor of the town, and he was president of the mill when he retired. But now, before him, old man Purse Merritt was. He wasn't president of the mill when he was mayor. No. Mr. Merritt was, and that was... Uh, so he was never both mayor and president at the same time? No, he wasn't. No, Claude, Claude wasn't. He was president after he was mayor. W.W. W. Bridges was president, vice president with Arthur Harris, secretary with C.W. Haddon, Recording secretary was Lamar Durham. Mm -hmm. Financial secretary was Tom McDonald. Tom who? Tom McDonald. Tom McDonald, yeah, I know him. Treasurer was Dewey Kenny. Mm -hmm. And guards were J.A. Helms, H.H. Channel, and Ed Melton. Yeah, I know him. And the local union is 96% of, and then it falls apart. When was this? November 1933. Oh, my God. 1934? No, 1933. They printed it in the local newspaper. 1933. In, in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'd be dog if I can... I can't, I can't even think of a... I know everyone... Them, well, the hair she's lived next to me there. Were any of those men still living? Huh? He lived there when I lived down the, on Ed Marilyn. He, I knew him well. Are any of these men still living? No. Kill him. I didn't even realize it was in the newspaper. Yeah. Wheeler Bridges, lived right up the street there. He was president. It's a funny thing, you know, in 1941, Wheeler Bridges Led a group back in that mill across the picket line trying to break that strike in 41. That's what the 34 strike done for the Union. That's what I was telling you, see. They lost confidence in it. Wheeler led the... Wheeler led the group in trying to break a strike in 41. And he was president of that local. Evidently, that's what I can't. I can't. I can't grasp what what went on during that time. I know it hurt. I know it hurt the people of confidence in a in a union. You see, I was raised in a union home. My daddy was a stone cutter. Some folks called them masons, but back in them days, they didn't sew. That curbing out there, he cut that stone out there for that curb. Out of flat rock down here. From for Claude Robbins. And uh, 
till he hurt his back, he cut stone because he was making a dollar and a quarter an hour. Back in them days. Of course, after he hurt his back, he was foaming to shot me. He hurt his back and splitting, he missed using an eight pound hammer and he pulled the muscle loose from his back. And he had to quit cutting stone. So your daddy was in the union? Oh well, yeah, he's a member of the union till he till he come he, he had to quit cutting stone all the time he was a stone cutter, he was a member of the union. Because you don't cut stone without being it's just like a brick mason's union, a stone cutters union. They're profession it's a, it's a trade union, see. And uh, Then he came to the mill? He came to the mill as a mechanic. And that's why we that's when we moved to the mill. But he, see, that's what he, he believed in an honest day's work for an honest day's pay, and he believed in seniority rights, and I was raised in it, see. And I believe in them, but I don't believe in, I don't believe in trying to ride roughshod over management because that's what unions is for, is to keep from management from riding roughshod over them. It's a fair play game to me, with me. So was your father here in 34? Yeah. Was, did he join the union again? I guess so. I don't know whether... 34, I don't know whether he was working at the mill in or... He might have been cutting that stone for him. He cut stone, yeah. Long time after he opened up his quarry down here for Will Jackson. And he cut stone. Lots, right. Did you ever have any of that black women work for your family? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had a, one. We had Minerva, the last one that worked for us. She's a good old soul. She, uh, she learned, she, we paid Social Security on Minerva. And Minerva got old enough to retire, she drew a Social Security thing. What about in the 30s? Did you have colored women work for you then? Yeah. They helped, uh, my wife's mother lived with us. They helped her keep house and we'd Cotton mill, the white cotton mill workers, were they able to afford to have the black help? Yeah. Yeah, you see, we wasn't making nothing and we didn't, we fed them, we paid them. I reckon Edna paid them about half of what she made because she wasn't making five, six dollars a week, see. We fed them. And uh, they worked till. Well, now Albert didn't have to work that long because Miss Patton was with us, but some of them would come full day and work all day. Every day? Yeah. I know we had. Uh, Did they take care of your son too? Huh? Did they take care of your son also? Yeah, but Miss Patton was with the, uh, she was there too, see, with them. my wife's mother. I don't know who wrote it, but I don't think any of them boys 
Well, I know none of them boys at the mill didn't write it. But they could have got a school teacher or something to write it for them because That's all, that's that's the only way I other could have got some businessman to wrote it. But I don't know, I don't have no idea who it is. But I guess they believe that President Roosevelt and the NRA was gonna cover them too. They was covered under the NRA. But now you can't uh if it was seniority rights under the union, why well, it was that's what happened. I don't and uh, now I know this under some of this civil rights stuff and equal rights stuff. They want to do away with seniority and some union contracts, but I don't think I don't think that's right. I don't think they should do it. Folks say, oh, I hadn't been there for so many years. Well, that fellow been there 10 years before him. He should have a right to preference for his job. I don't care black, white, green, or yellow. Because I think in this case, they, this is just what I'm reading into it. I think that they were under the impression that, um, you know, they changed some things around and maybe, <clears throat> I know that in some other mills, when, when, because the blacks who worked on the inside were covered by the NRA, all of a sudden the jobs looked more desirable because they were getting minimum wage, and they started giving some of those jobs to white people because it was better wages. The only, the only, that's the only thing I know that could have done it was, and them names you had, they wasn't in there. It wasn't them. That was, uh, laid off when the white fellas moved up from his speeders being discontinued to take them jobs back in the, around the cards. Oh, that's what happened. They took out machinery that the white people were working on, so they put them into the opening in the picking rooms? That's right. They went back on them jobs, see. But evidently with the union, yeah, it, seniority was prevailing. And it... Uh, Either that or just... If they they were just going to favor the white workers over some of the black workers, not with a union, I don't think. But the union wasn't recognized by Mary Layla in 1934. They were just organizing. They didn't have recognition. If they was they was dealing with the management. Though. Were they? I'm quite sure they did. They got the committee set up. So. But you know what? And they had committees set up all over the South. That didn't mean that the committees. That, that that management wanted to meet with the committees. Uh, See, that's I don't I don't remember being I don't remember them doing it, but I'm quite sure they did with the fellows that you called over really? there. Okay. I'm so quite sure they were meeting with them. So, but but back to the, so what happened was they discontinued. Tell me again. They discontinued the speeders. Yeah, they tore them out, okay. and uh, them fellows. Went back and taking them jobs. I don't know what I don't know what year it was, but I imagine that's what they're talking about. Like in thirty four, like uh, they took the opening room, picker room jobs. Yeah, and cards. Okay. And that's the only thing I can. I know that's when they. That's. I don't know what they've done with all of them. I don't know what, uh, but I know. That's when they was, this place was when them fellas went back on them jobs because they, you couldn't hardly find a job, see, they rolled them. What does road mean, they rolled them? What Exercising their seniority. Okay, gotcha. That's what happened. That's what they're writing about. Yeah. That's what they're writing about. But then, and I, I notice they're complaining now about it, but you can, I don't blame I don't blame a white man if that black's been there because, actually, I think now a black has the same opportunity as a white. 
I think it should be a level playing field. I don't think they should keep pampering these blacks. That's one thing the matter with these. Well, both of our young people being spoiled to death by people pampering them, and especially the blacks killing blacks, and they should quit pampering and let them know it's out there for you if you get up off your butt and get out there and work, sweat a little and get it. Now that's what I, that's how I think about it. Now I say, if they was mistreated, it's not being done there and they've got the law to protect them. Your equal rights and your civil rights. And I say it ought to be a level playing field. Now, at that time in 19, I agree with you. At that time in 1934, did you were you a did you were you a boss or did you have? No, I was 20. I was 22 years old. Because the year Bobby was born, I was 22. In October, he was born in October, and I was 22 years old in October, the fifth, and he was born in October, the 20. 27. So I was, I wouldn't. And you remember where you might have been, and you could have been working in that area. Yeah, I'm quite sure I was around in there somewhere. Okay. Because I was, I don't know whether I was on slubbers or speeders or. Was your job taken away? Did they take your speeder away? Uh, I don't remember. You're not one of those men that got I don't put remember. on those pick in the opening of the picking room. I don't remember whether I was displaced or not. I guarantee you it's going to come back to you over the next two days. <laughs> I wish I could. I know I run, I run the opening room, I run the pickers, I run them all. Because actually, at that time I wanted to learn all I could. Because I knew the only way I was going to get to the top. I didn't have the education. I couldn't get it out of a book. I couldn't go to college. I had to get with every machine in there and learn what that baby was doing. And there's one thing I learned. I learned if you wanna weave yarn, it's got to be good. And the only way to make good yarn out of cotton is to parallel them fibers straight. You gotta have them in fibers straight where that, when it gets to that spin and that twist, hits it on that roller puts it on that bobbin, or if a cross fiber's there, it's going to knock the end down, you got waste. I'd learned that by sweating blood under the blame machine, knowing what setting it take, knowing. Because see, back then, when I come in the forties, well, at 21 years old, I was 22, the latter part of it. But at 21 years old, I might not have been thinking about business too much back then. And like I say, I might have been thinking about it too much. I don't know. But I know I knew one thing. Like I said, I had to do the best I could. And the only thing I had to do it with was my labor, and I had to get all I could for it. And I had to learn all I could to get it. And if I hadn't have got, Sin Fasima cut me down at 58 years old, just when I was hitting my stride. And I wonder, the good Lord's been good to me. Oh, I thank him for every blessing. But you know, 
that's another thing that man I, I had to I had to fight it because I'd worked all of my life. I'd always had something to do. Every minute of my day was filled with something. And just stop, sit down, nothing to do. I hope you never have to face that. It's, it's tough. And my wife, she was good a woman as I ever knew, but I wonder. I know she didn't. She would go out to the neighbors. All these folks then were good neighbors. They were, we had good neighbors in here. They had the best place in town to live. But she come in here one day and I told her, I ain't going to worry about not being able to work no more. I've done all I can do. And it's finished. I ain't, I ain't worried about it. I hadn't looked back. God's been good to me, as I say. He's taken care of me, looked after me. And I hadn't, I can truthfully say, he's taken care of me. I hadn't had to ask anybody for anything. Well, you're such a nice man. I really, really enjoy talking with you. Well, I've enjoyed talking to you. It's Good night. I won't say you 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 trust in the Lord. He's gonna take care of you. I know. I've been there. I'll be eighty two years old in October. And it's been course like I say, if you ain't got no breath you don't have nothing but He's still taking care of me. Because actually, I can't take care of myself. He gives me what little breath I need to take care of myself. And he, well. if you trust him, he'll do the same. I wish you'd been in that cotton mill so you wouldn't have gotten in that mess to begin with. Well, I, I know that eating cigarettes is what done it, and I, I might not have had to do it, but I, I did because, like I said, I wanted to, I wanted to know what to do when I got the chance to do it, and I did. I've had job up. I've had a job offered to me when I had a job offered to me about two years after I had to quit work. But I, and man, that was when, see, I, I retired in 1970. That's when the money started flowing.